Okay, uh, this is a video for higher pupils studying atmosphere and I'm going to deal with the ITCZ. Now, um, the ITCZ is a question that has quite a fearsome reputation. So this video lesson is going to aim to break it down into very simple, easily digestible parts. And though the answer that you'll eventually see in this space may not be an A band 1 quality response, it will certainly get you uh, the fundamentals and the details necessary to a really good quality answer and with very limited extra revision you can get an A. So, where do we start? Essentially, the ITCZ is um, a line that goes around the world and represents where the temperature is hottest. Many people think that the area where the temperature is hottest is the equator. This is not so. The equator, this line, is merely the mathematical dividing line between north and south. You may be aware that the Earth's position in space changes throughout the year. Sometimes the North Pole tilts towards the sun. Sometimes it points away from the sun. As a result, the area of the Earth's surface that the sun can see best varies. And so it varies between this height around the world being the hottest area to this height around the world being the hottest area. And according to where you are in the year, the hottest place on Earth varies between these two latitudes. And the ITCZ is merely the line on the globe where the sun's temperature is most extreme. And that constantly varies throughout the year. Now, there'll be about 50% of you who go, OK, I've got that, that makes sense. And there's another 50% of you that go, not quite so sure about that. So let's try and boil it down and take it back from that complex introduction. What are you really going to be asked to do by the SQA? The SQA are going to ask you to look at a map of Africa. The map of Africa will have three locations. Today, we'll call them A, B and C. In the exam, they'll have real location names. A, B and C will have climate graphs added to them. A's climate graph will show large bars of rainfall. Most importantly, there are two big seasons of rainfall in the year for location A. Two rainy seasons. Location B has one rainy season and it's less rainy than location A. Location C has very little rain altogether and most importantly has periods of drought on either side of its very short rainy season. So location A, two rainy seasons and they're very heavy. Location B, one rainy season and it's not so heavy. Location C, hardly any rain at all and drought. Right, what happens next? Well, that's where we need to deal with these two red arrows. The red dashed line here is meant to represent the ITCZ itself. Remember, that moves throughout the year. And for the purposes of answering this question, the ITCZ moves between location A, B and C and then back again throughout the year. As the months of the year roll by, the area where the sun is hottest changes from A to B to C and then from C to B to A. So this red dashed line is mobile. What is happening at that red dashed line? Well, it is the boundary line between the tropical maritime, TM, and the tropical continental, TC, air masses. What are they? Well, tropical means it's warm, and maritime means it's moist. The air carries moisture. And tropical continental, clearly it's warm. But because it's continental, it is dry. This knowledge will come in very useful for scoring marks in a moment. Essentially, 
where these two air masses meet each other, they are forced, they have no option, but to uh, rise up into the sky. If we look at this diagram from the side, this is the land mass of Africa, this is the ocean. If you're interested, it's worth knowing that this is called the Gulf of Guinea. I'll refer to that. So this is the Gulf of Guinea, and this is Africa. This time viewed in cross-section. Across the ocean, across the Gulf of Guinea, is the tropical maritime air mass. Here it comes. But across Africa comes the TC air mass. Here it is. And they meet above location A. There's location A. They have nowhere else to go, so they are forced to rise. They're forced to rise because they have nowhere else to go, and because they're warm. They're tropical, remember. Warm. And warm air rises. So up they go. Now, because the tropical maritime air mass is maritime, and it contains moisture, all of that moisture rises up into the sky and forms a huge storm cloud, which then results in very heavy rain. And that explains our first rainstorm at location A. Okay. However, as I said, these two air masses meet at different locations in the calendar, depending what month of the year it is. So time goes by, and the ITCZ moves to location B. Notice the extra journey that the TM air mass has to make. Let me show you on this diagram. Here is the TM air mass. Look how far it's got to go before it's over location B and gets forced up into the air. Now here, the TM air mass has got to keep drawing moisture from the Gulf of Guinea to make the air moist, but that air has got a great distance to go. So what happens is that the air dries out as it goes on its journey over the land between A and B. Some of the moisture is lost as rainfall. Some of the, moist, some of the moisture just um, is lost through, of, um, it's not able to replace it from the Gulf of Guinea. So the rain cloud is consequentially smaller with less rain. And that explains the smaller rainfall at location B. Finally, you're at location C. Later in the year, the ITCZ has moved again and here we are. Notice now that the TM air mass has got to go on an extreme journey to reach this location and the TC air mass gets pushed back. In our diagram, it's even more obvious. The TM air mass is now covering thousands of kilometres of land to reach location C and allow itself to be forced up into the sky when it bumps into the TC air mass. TM, TC. As a result, the TM air mass has lost almost all of its moisture by the time it reaches this point. It's dried out completely. It has no more moisture to give, and as a consequence of that, the clouds are really, really small, insignificant, and the rainfall is almost non-existent. So let's pause there and score our first marks. First of all, you might be asked to describe. If you're describing, you're describing these graphs, and it's quite simple. A has two peaks. B has one smaller peak, and C has um, periods of drought. For all of these, quote the months of the year. Tell me 
when the periods of drought are, tell me um, when the peak of rainfall is, and tell me when the two peaks of rainfall are. And those would be adequate descriptions. In a question of this nature, you could get up to half marks for description of the graphs. Um, on to explanations. I should have pointed out there, if you want to get that note on descriptions, just uh, rewind the video and pause it. You can copy it down. For the explanations, we break our explanations down into A, B and C. Remember, A, B and C would actually have African place names in the event of the exam. Location A, um, the TM air mass is uh, next to the Gulf of Guinea, which I'll just say G of G to save space. Because of this, it is able to absorb a lot of water, absorbs a lot of moisture, rises and forms big, uh, large, massive storms storm clouds. Those are called cumulonimbus clouds if you really want to impress the examiner. Now I'm going to come back to add the second point to part A, but for the moment I just want to show you the simplest version. Location B. By the time the ITCZ is overhead, when the ITCZ is overhead, the TM air mass has shed, that means lost, most of its moisture. So clouds are smaller. And that takes us to location C. And at location C, the TM air mass is so dry it can't form clouds at all. When the ITCZ reaches C, the TM air mass is dry and cannot form clouds at all. Now, in the first instance, you've got marks here, here, and here. For your descriptions that I just went through, you can normally score one, two, or three marks, one, one mark out of each graph. Um, if we try and develop upon this, there's a second thing that we can say. And that's because, if you fully understand the ITCZ, you will know that as the ITCZ moves from A to B to C, from A to B to C, that represents the year seasons changing as the sun moves in the sky. It makes sense, therefore, that there is a return journey of the ITCZ from C to B to A. And that's the bit that you might commonly forget to add to your answer, so let me show you how to do that now. For location A, the returning ITCZ is able to draw moisture from the Gulf of Guinea once again explaining the second uh, rainy season. Location A has two rainy seasons, and the second season that you see here is explained by the ITCZ returning south to location A. At that point, the tropical maritime air mass is then firmly over the Gulf of Guinea. It's able to draw in more moisture. It's able to create those large clouds again, and so you get a second rainy season. Location B 
has not much to be said for it. But location C, as the ITC said returns, and I'll just pause there, as the ITC said returns south, what you'll find is that this air mass, the TC air mass, is then dragged in over location C. And TC, tropical continental, is warm and dry. So, as the ITCZ returns south, the tropical continental air mass is dragged in. Um, and causes drought because it is so dry, because it has no moisture. I appreciate that's getting a bit difficult to read at the bottom. In summary, this does not pretend to be the perfect ITCZ answer. But what it is, is an excellent foundation upon which to get the fundamentals understood in your head. If you find it difficult to conceptualise, that means imagine all of the processes involved, then simply understand this. The SQA want you to make a comparison between locations A, B and C. Location A is very rainy, B less rainy, C very dry. The reason for this is because of these two air masses. Learn their names. Tropical maritime, tropical continental. And where they meet, they have a, there's a border, a boundary, and that's called the ITCZ. And at the ITCZ, they are forced to rise up into the sky. Condensation takes place, clouds form, and rain falls. The reason there is the least rain here is because of the distance the tropical maritime rain, the tropical maritime air mass has to travel. It loses most of its moisture along that journey. That's the first mark winning point. Two, the reason there's loads of rain here is because the Gulf of Guinea is nearby and the tropical maritime air mass can draw lots of moisture into the system and create these huge storm clouds. Second mark winning point. The third mark winning point is the concept that this is a two-way journey. The ITCZ returns south and it visits location A twice in the year, bringing two dumps of rain as the TM air masses are able to kind of refuel over the Gulf of Guinea. Fourth major mark winning point is the idea that as the ITCZ returns south, it brings a TC air mass in, a tropical continental air mass, a warm dry air mass, and that causes the drought you see at location C. Now if you take those four simple concepts and you add them to the basic descriptions that I took you for, through earlier, that's four, five, six, seven marks out of what is potentially a ten mark question. That's seven out of ten, seventy percent, which is an A. Uh, you, what you want to do guys is you want to review this, watch it a couple of times and then watch the second lesson which uh, is on the website and it goes into much greater depth and detail and um, then come to a couple of revision classes and you'll have this, this really quite complex question, you'll have this down. And it's a really competitive question, it's one to get good at. If you can be good at this, you'll be better than a lot of your competition. Okay, thanks.